Hey guys, Jam here. In today's video, I'm going to be kid bashing up the Primaris Captain from the Indominus box set. Now, I've been hanging on to this guy for a while, wasn't sure what I wanted to do with him. And I have actually previously kid bashed my own kind of Space Wolf you guy of this. Yeah, I probably should have mentioned I'm making this guy a Space Wolf. So yeah, I did my own version, like before the Indominus box even came out during all the hype and everything. I haven't quite finished him, there's a few touches I want to add. So yeah, because I got this Space Wolf -y version for my Space Wolf army, I'm not too sure if I want to make this guy for my Death Watch. I'm still going to wolf him up, but I don't know if I should make him Death Watch or my Space Wolf Army. And I'm actually kind of dedicating or doing this video for Bad Fish because he sent me a wolfy care package a while ago with Ragnar Blackmane. So I told him if I got the time, I'll make a model for him to get inducted into my community army. And he also said he's an Orc player, but he's really growing to like Space Wolves and he wants to be a close combat specialist over a dude with a gun. So it doesn't get much more close specialist or close quarter specialist, I should say, than a Wolf Lord. And for the Orky elements, well, we'll be adding them later. So yeah, this is not going to be my usual deep dive into thoughts in every single thing I'm doing. I'm just going to kind of smash this out as I kind of go along and, you know, I'm just going to kind of wing it on this one. So here's some of the bits I'm going to use. I rolled out some green stuff that I'm going to be trying using later. I've got some chains and blah, blah, blah. But like I said, I'm not going to go through all that stuff like I usually do. And yeah, like I said, I'm not sure if mine's going to be Death Watch or Space Wolves, but that doesn't matter to you because that's just a shoulder swap anyway. So yeah, let's get cracking with the first part. All right, and the first part is making this shield a bit more wolfy or in this case, probably a bit more Death Watch. So what my plan is, I'm going to be removing all this stuff and I'm going to be attaching loads of skulls, like Orc skulls, any sort of Xenos monster kind of alien skulls on it and kind of add some chains and leather straps and stuff to hold it down so that's kind of the plan so that's where the orky bits are coming from so yeah first thing we're going to do is get our trusty clippers out here and i really should get my new ones out these are ancient now so all i'm going to do is snip this off i don't know this does feel like a shame because it's such a cool shield as well get this kind of bony rib cage off here i'm going to try and save this but i'm not sure that's going to be too easy to be honest well, we got the majority off. Now we're going to have to go in with our hobby knife. But of course, be careful because I actually sliced myself open today. But yeah, I'm just going to slowly get rid of this. doesn't have to be too neat because we're going to be adding some skulls and stuff and chains on top of it. So I'm going to get this done. Get back to you guys. All right. So after a couple of minutes of scraping and snipping and stuff, I've got it to that point. I managed to save that purity seal. But if you don't care about that, it'll be much easier. But I thought I'd leave it there. And yeah, it's a bit rough. But like I said, we're going to be sticking skulls and chains on it. So it's all good. Now what I want to do to make it a bit more wolfy, I've got this uh, frost claw thing from the wolfen kit. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these claws off, just keep the scully head. And that should fit really nicely right there. So I'm going to quickly do that. Just snip these off, keep them for whatever I'm going to use in the future. They're pretty cool pieces. Yeah, just realized I probably could have used these for my black dragon kit bashing video, but... Yeah, didn't think about it at the time, I guess. And yeah, all I'm going to do now is go in with the hobby knife, just kind of clean this all up around these edges here, and once again, get back to you guys. All right, so what I've done is I've just cut that peg down a little bit because I was poking out of it too much. And as you can see with the little wolf scully thing, I've just kind of trimmed down the sides, got rid of those kind of spiky claws, and I'm just going to glue that on now. And there we have it. I was going to move it a bit more down so it just looks like kind of like a scully bit hanging off there but i thought when it's there like that like proper fitted into the soak it kind of looks like it's part of like almost a logo and i think that actually looks really really nice i wouldn't mind that as like my company badge or something to be perfectly honest so yeah that's fitting real good now we're just going to stick some xeno skulls that actually looks almost so perfectly in there it kind of feels like a shame to just stick a bunch of other skulls on there but yeah, I'll see where it goes. I'm, I'm kind of thinking it can almost make like a totem pole kind of vibe. Put some bones and skulls going up in a line. I'm going to play around a bit and yeah, get back to you guys with that. But I think that's looking pretty snazzy. All right, so I've got some of the skulls on. I've just blue tacked them where I wanted just to kind of see what it actually looks like and the composition and all that kind of stuff. And I think it's actually looking pretty snazzy, not too bad. Now I was thinking of maybe squishing them together a bit more so I can cram more in there. And to be honest, I was kind of planning on having a lot more orky bits on here because like i said bad fish likes orcs i was gonna add loads of dead orc bits but i thought the skulls are a bit too similar so it just looked a bit boring and if he's a xenos alien hunter i thought well, a little bit of like one of each or something like that and also what i'm gonna do is the reason why i haven't crammed them together is because i'm gonna have to 
add like straps and stuff like that to look like they've been held onto the shield. And obviously if they're crammed together plus that and all that, I think it'll look a bit like too much. So yeah, these are just blue tacked. I'm going to take them off and I'm going to start doing some like green stuff, straps and stuff like that. And hopefully it'll work. But I mean, you can use chains, you can use like sewing thread or whatever you want to do. But I'm going to try do some green stuff leather straps. All right, so I've got my trusty little green stuff board here. Get a bit of water on here. And what you want to do is you want to get a little bit of green stuff. And I've already started this one. Get it, and all you want to do is roll it out, keeping your fingers nice and wet. And you just want to get this quite thin. So just evenly pull it out without snapping it, which I think I'm going to be doing here. And that'll probably be thin enough. Now you can keep it rounded like a little thread or you can flatten it out. So maybe it looks like a bit of like leather strap or something like that. So talking about this kind of stuff, if you guys are like really into green stuffing space wolves, there's someone I recently found and I think a lot of people already know him on Instagram called Valborn. I think his name was Valbjorn. No, I think it's Valbjorn. But yeah, he does loads of awesome space wolf kit bashes. I know he's got a YouTube channel with a couple of videos out now as well. So if you want to see this kind of stuff, he has a lot of videos on that as well. So yeah, just a little shout out there for him. I always appreciate some good green stuffing and space wolves and stuff like that. So yeah, let's start working on this. So obviously we're just going to like, like so you can flatten it out or you want to just cut the pieces that you want to get. And I'm going to stick them into the eyeballs and stuff. And speaking of Velbion, actually, usually I use my hobby knives and all that kind of stuff. But in one of his videos, he mentioned using toothpicks for green stuff. And as soon as you said that, I was like, it just clicked in my head. I was like, of course you use toothpicks. It just, it's the perfect thing. It just seems like it would work really well. So I'm going to be trying that out today or later when I'm going to be doing some like green stuff, fur and beards and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, toothpicks for fur and straps. And he uses it for pretty much everything. And I think it will work pretty well. So we'll see how this works out later. Alrighty. So done a bit of the green stuff stuff. Green stuff stuff? Yeah. Um, I just kind of wanted to practice, make sure I've got the right thickness before I show you guys how to go about it to make sure. But as you can see, I've kind of made a nice little flat kind of leathery straps in the eyeballs there, around the head to the bottom there. To be honest, I had it quite nice originally, but then I pushed it down and it kind of made it look a bit more messy. But that one there looks quite nice. So I've got it going up there or through there and kind of tucking into that metal bit there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue the strap, come down this way, and then hook into there and then I might do like one or two across there but that's the part I'm going to show you guys now. So like I said you get your green stuff make sure your hands are wet yeah so just get your little ball make sure this area is damp and once again you just kind of want to be rolling it out with your finger like this. Now you don't want to do it too thin obviously because it's not going to look right or it's going to start snapping and all that kind of stuff. And also with this kind of stuff, because you, you're working it a lot and you're pulling it across things, you don't want your green stuff to be super fresh. So maybe make the ball, leave it for like 20 minutes, half an hour or something, and then start doing this. Just be careful you don't do little sections like that there where it starts getting a little bit thin there. So try and keep it relatively even if you can. Uh, and i got to say, I tried the toothpick on that. And Velbion, if you're watching this or if you ever come across this video, this thing has changed my life, seriously. Who needs sculpting tools and hobby knives and stuff when you just got a simple toothpick? It's absolutely amazing. You know, got to give credit where credit's due. I've never seen it before until he did it. And yeah, it works marvels. So normally I'd be using my hobby knife to flatten it out. But I tried this out and put a bit of water on there, but you don't want too much. Because the wood's kind of got its own textured as well. It almost gives it like a leathery, worn leather kind of vibe, which I really, really like. So yeah, which my hobby knife usually wouldn't give me when I do this kind of stuff. So yeah, there's some really, really great Space Wolf kit bashes out there for sure. All right, so that's pretty much it. you got a nice and flat leathery strap. Like I said, you can keep it rounded if you want. And then, see, like there, it's a bit too thin. So that's probably going to snap, to be perfectly honest. So I might just cut it off now anyway. That should be enough. We're going to stretch it out a bit anyway. And we've got our little strap. So always make sure your tools are damp but not wet because when you're trying to sandwich it in there, if it's too much water, then it's just going to slip around. So I'm going to try and get it, uh, if I don't drop it now. Yeah, I'm going to get it tucked right in there so it looks like the strap's flowing through. And they're about the same thickness, so it looks pretty good. And yeah, just, you know, gently dab that down. You don't want to leave marks. And then we just come back to the other side. So it's hooking over this kind of thing over here. And I want it to end there. And now all we do is get our hobby knife and just kind of press in there where we want it to stop. 
Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Just make sure that it looks like it's tucked under that metal gritty thing. Now, depending on how cute your green stuff is, it should just stick in there. If not, if it's still loose, like once it's dry, you know, just get a little bit of super glue and kind of run it along there and it should be fine. But let's just uh, adjust this section, make sure it's all where we want it. Maybe roll this to flatten it down, push it a bit more this way. And there we go. You've got a strap and obviously you can work a way around it, add some texture and stuff like that. But that's the general kind of, it's not like I needed that. That's the general kind of way I'm going about it. So yeah, we've got a little straps hooking up there. We're not going to see that anywhere once it's like glued onto the model really, but it's there. So we know it's there and it feels good. And all you've got to do is make more of those straps and add them into the skulls if you want to do the similar kind of thing. I'll do one now for you guys to kind of see as well. Uh, let's try to do this super tiny tau skull. So this is probably not going to work out well because, you know, trying to get this small detail. Just, just use this piece of strap that I had left behind. Try and see if I can pick it up. And like I say, you just put one in there. If you don't have too much water, then you'll be good because it won't stick. Try that again. Yeah, this is not really very sticky right now. Might have left it a bit too long. So let's try again and again and again yeah so we got it in there okay we don't have it in the eye okay so we finally got it in the eye that took me a while like i say very very gently just tuck this underneath now this is very fiddly because it's a tiny skull you want to go underneath because that's where it's going to kind of strap onto the other strap if that makes any sense so go around that way sorry guys i'm trying to get this decently on camera but this is super super fiddly and i've kind of destroyed the kind of band there but anyway let's stick it into the eye just push that in there with the toothpick. And yeah, you basically get the idea. Now all I'm going to do now is because I've ruined this a bit. I'm just going to flatten it out a bit. But to be honest, I could probably do that when it's actually glued on. Kind of shape it a bit more. So yeah, that's how you do that. Okay, so we've got the towel skull on there. You can kind of see the vibe that I'm going for now. Obviously, what we're going to do is just kind of adjust this one. You Like I said, fix it up again. Just kind of straighten it off. And then at the back, just tuck the bottom kind of strap in a bit. So it looks like it's ready getting in there. And yeah, that's basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a couple extra straps and all that stuff. Strap up the skulls, maybe some chain and all that. And I'll get back to you guys. And there we have it, guys. The completed shield. Now, it's not the neatest work I ever did in my life. Because it's extremely fiddly, as you can imagine. Trying to get all this green stuff and the tiny skulls and stuff like that. It didn't take me too long, though. But... Yeah, like I said, my initial strap there is a lot thinner than the rest. And like, yeah, just generally not the neatest, but I think it turned out pretty effective. You know, you've got your skulls look like they're all strapped in. I've got them kind of going, so like it looks like the straps of leather are going into that little crevice. And I've put little rivet holes in there as well. So it looks like they've just been kind of punched in there. Just kind of the illusion of realism instead of actually all of it connecting up. But it kind of looks like it should be working out. Now, to be honest, I'm still really, really torn if I want to keep this in my Space Wolves army or into my Death Watch because, I mean, this shield's pretty much perfect for Death Watch. But I don't know, I'll have to have a, like I said before, a little bit more of a think about it because this shield has turned out really, really cool and I don't know which army to put it in. But yeah, really, really nice, effective way if you're doing some sort of Death Watch or Space Wolves or anything like that. Any sort of tribal kind of Space Marines or people like, like, like to collect trophies, I guess. But yeah, that's that one. And now I'm going to move on to the next step alrighty guys i'm back and it's actually a new day had somebody like banging and drilling and there was a lot of noises so i kind of figured i'm gonna have to wait until i got free time again but in the meantime i've been thinking about what chapter i want this guy to be and to be fair i'm still kind of torn away i want to go with my space wolves so i think i'm just going to turn this guy into a death watch so my next step is going to be cutting off this guy's shoulder pad here now i've done this kind of stuff on video before it's just you know, trimming and dry fitting the shoulder pad until it's in the place that you want. So I'm not going to show that on video. I'm just going to get that done and then get back to you guys as always. So yeah, I'm probably going to do it to the both sides. I mean, that side might be covered in fur, but just to be safe, I'm going to trim them both down. All right, so I've trimmed down this shoulder pad. It only took a couple of minutes because I only cut like the first kind of layer off, if that makes any sense. Because these kind of Blade Guard Veteran Indominus guys, their shoulder pads are super chunky. They're actually Gravis size shoulder pads or Terminator size, not like your normal Marine ones. Now, if you want to put normal Marine shoulder pad on here, you're going to have to trim it down a lot more like I've done in my previous videos doing the Kid Bash and the Blade Guard Veterans and all that. But because with this guy, I'm going to leave him with the kind of chunky ones and I've got the Terminator Death Watch pad 
fits per pretty much per perfectly spot on there but you can also go for the gravis ones if you want to do that less cutting and it kind of keeps that chunky kind of rimmed kind of vibe as well so yeah i could pretty much stick his arm on now and it's good to go all right one of the last things we've got to do now before we move on to the actual green stuff and wolfing this bad boy up even more is we got to get the other arm on now the arm that he comes with is pretty sweet but i want to go something a little bit more wolfy and like i said i've got like kind of a captainy dude with a sword anyway so i'm going to give this guy an axe but instead of cutting his hand off and using the arm i'm going to use a completely different arm so i can use it for a future kit bash and the arm i'm probably really going to use is this one from the space wolves upgrade sprue it kind of goes down and back a little bit like that so i think that's a pretty good pose and all i'm going to do is chop off the chainsaw by the wrist and i'm going to use one of these now initially i was thinking maybe i should do the new wolf spear the new successor chapter chapter by kind of kid bashing the spear up this is still an option maybe i'll do something like that in the future but i think that's quite a nice spear there obviously you've got the old space wolves upgrade sprue which has this sweet sword on there but i feel like yeah it's just a sword it's the and anybody can do that you can use that if you want to but i want to go for an axe reason being and the reason why i'm going for this style of axe is because he's kind of got all these like severed heads going on so i feel like kind of like a, a headsman kind of like an executor kind of vibe is what i want to go for here so yeah comment below when i'm done with this guy and you see what he looks like what should i call him i feel like there's definitely something headsman or some sort of space wolfy choppy off head kind of name for this guy but yeah that's the axe i'm gonna go for and I'm hopefully going to be using this arm. So yeah, let's get cracking with that. I'm quite excited because I'm a sucker for these wolf and axes. And that's where they come from as well, by the way. So first things first, obviously, we're going to have to chop this off. So I'm just going to chop it off right by the wrist. They're leaving this kind of like little, I don't know what you call it, wrist guardy section. So I'm just literally going to cut it nice and even right down there. And I've done this kind of stuff a million times before. Keeping that chainsaw doesn't fly away. I cut that at a bit of an angle, but yeah, so we got that for another time. All you got to do is make sure this is nice and flush. We can sort that out when we start mixing the two together. So yeah, we got that. Now with the wolf and axe, we've got two choices here. Well, we've got a few choices, I should say. One is we just cut this hand off, cut there, cut there, and just move it up. So you just kind of cut that out and then move it up and glue it. Or you can just kind of file the, the hand away. And then you can use some green stuff similar to like how we did the shield and just kind of wrap around it. That would look really nice if you want a longer longer shaft there. But yeah, obviously we're going to be using this wolf in hand and it's got like hair and nails and stuff like that, which obviously doesn't really quite look right unless you want to go for the whole he's slowly transforming thing. But I want to keep this kind of like a metal glove kind of vibe. So all we really got to do is take the back of your knife and all we're going to do is kind of like flatten the sections off. So just kind of Kind of like how you clean mold lines off of things. Just do that. Make this kind of top of the hand kind of flat. And when that's flat, we're going to do the same thing. Just kind of flattening off the knuckles and stuff like that. So they don't look as organic, if that makes any sense. We want it a bit more like man-made kind of harsh angles and stuff. And we're just going to do that all the way around. Just making sure it all gets nice and flat. And even when it comes to the nails and stuff, you just kind of do that. And when it's really sharp, you can just kind of finely just cut it away a little bit if i can do this on camera just go that way and yeah like i say just kind of drag it across making all these angles nice and square and once you've painted it up and stuff it should look like a metal glove so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and do that and show you guys the results and you can go forth and do it because to be honest it's super easy and there we have it if you have a look at that hand i've kind of just done a very quick messy job of it and i think it gives you a bit more of an effective thing from there that angle it kind of looks like a metallic kind of glove. Kind of squared it off and stuff like that. I could spend a bit more time on it, smooth it out and stuff. But I think once it's primed and painted and stuff like that, it's all going to be fine. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I chopped the bottom off. All i got to do now is decide how long I want to add it. So I can cut the hand off there. Yeah, snip it there. Add a bit of more of the hilt on. Or just cut it right at the end. Like pommel, whatever you call it. Just cut it there and stick it onto the end but next thing we're going to do before we do that because that can go be the last thing we do we're going to have to cut this peg off get the arm into the position we want let that dry a bit and then we're going to stick the axe on all right one thing i've kind of mentioned in my previous videos as well when you're kind of worried about the strength of these joints you can score it a bit so just cut some kind of lines in there so the glue bonds a bit better because obviously there's not much holding it there but it should be fine i've done this a million times with weapons like this and it's never 
had an issue, but if that's something you're worried about, you can score it. Now, what I might do is actually put the weapon on first, do it all kind of at the same time, because I'm not sure on the pose yet. And because plastic glue takes a little bit to dry, it'll give us some time to kind of play around with the pose and see what we want to do. So first of all, I'm going to get a nice blob on there. A decent amount actually helps because it'll mold around the edges as well. We want it kind of going in line with the arm, with the wrist and everything. That looks pretty good. Now we just quickly, without moving it too much, and we stick it on here very gently and try and see what the pose looks like. So, so far I'm not liking the pose too much. So that's where we're going to start maybe rotating things around a bit. Yeah, it looks a bit more too like, actually I don't know, it seems alright. This is the kind of thing you can kind of figure out. That's why the good thing about plastic glue, kind of twist this up a bit. Alright, so I'm back and I've kind of messed around with it, kind of tested where I want it to go. I'm not 100% sure on the pose or not yet, but I think it looks pretty decent. Now what I'm going to do is, once it's dry, I don't want to touch it right now because I've had to put some extra glue there because I was moving around too much. I'll stick the little kind of end cap pommely thing. I'm sure you guys are probably going to have a go at me for not knowing what it's called, but yeah, I'll stick that on there at the end. I think that's a looks like an appropriate size. For someone that's going to chop some heads off but yeah before we move on to the kind of final steps of green stuffing fur and beards and hair and all that kind of stuff we've got one more thing we've got to glue onto this well i shouldn't say one more thing i'm sure there's going to be a lot more things coming up but normally on this model like over here he has that kind of like he has that kind of tilt shield shoulder guard kind of thing over here but I'm going to stick this bit of wolfy claw thing just over there and then later I'm going to green stuff it together so it kind of blends in and this just comes from like the gray hunters sprue or something like that one of the space wolfy kits i've just kind of snipped off that bit so yeah i'm just going to stick a bit of glue on here and kind of see where i want it to go i'm really trying not to touch this axe but i keep doing it now unfortunately because i had to stop my previous recording of this all the green stuff that i kind of made up went to waste unfortunately so i'm gonna to have to mix up some more get my little fur texture played out from green stuff world Got this one over here. You guys definitely should get this if you play on any sort of space wolfies, especially Primaris ones. Definitely got to get that. I've done a video on that if you want to check it out. Just a quick update here, actually. First of all, this guy's looking pretty sweet, if I do say so myself. But that chunky shoulder pad I put on there for the Death Watch didn't let me put the backpack on because it was like too big. So I ended up trimming that down, and because of that, I had to take the arm off. And I accidentally yanked off the axe, and then I was going back and forth. So it turned out into like an hour worth of getting this thing back together again because I accidentally just like ripped everything apart without letting it dry because I'm trying to get through the video. So yeah, that's definitely something you got to look out for. Just let your things dry, get everything right. Don't make the mistakes like I did. Now I'm going to do this green stuff kind of collar around his neck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape this into like almost like a, a U shape. You know, like those neck pillows you get on airplanes. That's kind of what I'm going to be going for here but just a bit longer on one side so it can meet up on the that little fur over there. So yeah, like I said, get your hands all damp and let's kind of roll this out a bit. Let's see if that will work. So we got like that, then we can kind of test how it will go on. So just put it like that. I think once we're flattening it out and stuff, that might actually work out pretty good. I'm going to roll it out a little bit more. To be fair, I could probably use a bit more green stuff, but I usually use too much. So let's see how this goes. Just get my, well, anything around, you want a, like a rolling pin kind of thing. I'm just going to flatten this out a little bit, just so we kind of know what we're working with. And then, like I said, I'm going to get like a little U shape. Now, I've got to make sure it's going in the right direction that I want. Yeah, I think that's right. So if I go this way, the hair's going to be blowing that way. So it's got a certain kind of grain to it. So just make this nice and wet, get water all over there. And then all we're going to do is place this down, push it down, get that texture squeezed into the green stuff yeah let's gently peel this up and then pick that up like i said i probably should wait until this is like 100 percent dry should learn from my mistakes but you know impatient all right so i'm thinking this is going to be looking real snazzy if we can get it right so without pushing anything too much let's just start working this into where we want it so tuck that back in there and obviously we're gonna kind of move this so it blends into there a bit more but We'll do that later. You can keep it up against his head, but I want to do some hair later on. So I'm going to try and just tuck this away from there. 
Okay, so we've got it in pretty much the place we want. I put a dab of super glue here just to keep it in place. So I've got it around there, so it's kind of the same shape as that. There's not much going on here, so what I might do is get my scissors, or kind of pull this part so it looks a bit more like a tattered leathery thing. But what we're going to do now is to kind of blend it in. Get your hobby knife or your toothpick, whatever you want. And I just want to start kind of pulling the edges and stuff like that so it looks like fur coming out over there so it's not just like a straight line around there and obviously we wanted to blend into this already formed kind of fur pole kind of thing so kind of go in with the grain of that just kind of maybe define some of the fur that we've got and like i said just pull up some fur and stuff so it just looks more natural just pull like out here basically because we've just got straight lines you just want to get rid of those so it looks a bit more natural so yeah that's what i'm going to be doing now is that all right, so that's where we are so far. Now I did mess this side up a little bit because I was trying to blend it in there. And then, because as you can see, like the hair on this side is quite thick tufts and this side is kind of all strandy and stuff because like I said, I was trying to mold it in then I was trying to fix it up. And yeah, I'm not very good at hand molding it that much. I was trying to get the same kind of effect there and it just didn't really work out for me. But hopefully it still kind of looks decent enough. It's still got some big thick parts some different like strandy bits and to be honest i'm actually pretty chuffed of how he's turned out so far i'm gonna let this dry and then i'm gonna do the hair and stuff and then we're pretty much done i think okay so we're back and he is dry all the glues are dry the green stuff's dried everything i've glued him to the well he's scenic base to the base he's not actually glued down because i think painting down there will be a little bit easier if i can just pop him off later so i've already made up my little ball of green stuff you don't need much for this obviously now i've been experimenting with my ratios for this kind of stuff i've gotten like almost kind of like 50 percent less on the blue so you got like the more more yellow basically so yeah, as always keep your hands and your tools wet and all i'm going to do with this one when you've got it in a ball depending on how much beard you want to get you just want to cut a little edge off like that now this bit here is basically like the most rounded bit the point there yeah, the point right there is going to be on his chin so we just stick it on there now I wasn't planning on doing this kind of beard for this guy originally, that's why I probably shouldn't have glued his head into place. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult and yeah, this is probably too much green stuff but we'll work it around anyway. So let's just try and get that in there. Actually I'm just going to cut a little bit off, we can add some later because the way I've glued it in is quite a tight fit in there. Okay so now we just kind of work it into where we want it, maybe pull up his moustache a little bit. Now if you don't have enough for the moustache there, normally I just roll like a roll up, pin out kind of like a very, very small little line and stick on the tash, but I'm just trying to wedge it up myself because we've got quite a lot of green stuff here. So yeah, I'm just going to move this guy into the position that I want and then we'll get on to giving it some actual texture. All right, so between using the toothpick and my hobby knife, I've just kind of wiggled it into the way I want it. So obviously remember you got to kind of follow the line of the cheekbones, normally down by the, under the, bottom lip you'll have kind of like a two little gaps on that side it gives it a bit more of a natural look and yeah i think that actually looks pretty snazzy i think i'm gonna go with a bald dude just seems kind of right for this guy i mean he would look fine with some hair as well but yeah that's what i'm gonna go for so all i'm gonna do now is start adding a bit of texture now i usually just kind of use my hobby knife the sharpish kind of bit don't push too hard just kind of adding some line work and stuff in there yeah one thing i realized when i first started doing beards was I was almost thinking of it like in scale, if you know what I mean, doing loads of little strands and little lines. But if you look at the way GW does their like hair and beards and all that kind of stuff, it's always kind of big, thick strands instead because it's easier to paint and highlight up and it just looks more, looks better on a model like that. So I'm trying to replicate that a better, but yeah, I don't know how to go about it too well. But yeah, just make a couple of deepish lines amongst all the smaller ones. So at least you got somewhere for like your wash and your paints and stuff to kind of sit in. So yeah, that's all I'm going to be doing now. Make sure to rough, rough up there, just push it down a bit. So there's a bit more texture it goes like up and down. It's not just a straight line there as well. Same for the bottom. But I've done videos on how to do kind of beards and hair and stuff anyway, in a little bit more detail. So watch that if you want to. And I'm just going to finish this off. All right, so we're done with the beard. Hopefully you guys can see that. And just a slight FYI here, I'm actually changing my camera and stuff with my next videos coming up. So hopefully better quality. But yeah, hopefully if you can see that, I just did kind of like dabbing motions with the hobby knife. You can just see the, the lines, just kind of like tucking it in and out to make it a bit more natural, fitting in, in the moustache there. And I think it looks pretty good. 
And there we have it, guys. Now, I could have added a bit more wolfy bits here and there, but I feel like I feel like it's enough. He's got the fur pelts, the beard, the fancy shield, the axe, all that kind of stuff. And I think it was a success. So, yeah, let me know down below in the comments what you think of it. And like I said before, Badfish, if you're watching this, you kind of call dibs on naming this dude. But everybody else, if you want to, throw a name down there and we can get this guy into the community army. But as always, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. And if you like this sort of hobby content and haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then maybe check it out and do so. Because I do videos like this every single week. And of course, I've got a Patreon and a merch store and stuff like that if you want to kind of support the channel a bit and help me keep my bits box full. But yeah, until the next one, guys. Bye bye.